Today we're going to go over the biggest Tesla news over the past week, including massive recalls of thousands of vehicles, new details on the upcoming Hardware 4 self-driving computer, plus major changes to Tesla supercharging. A big thanks to Brilliant for sponsoring today's video. Whenever Tesla issues a recall, the news media outlets love to make a big story out of it, and it happened again. Tesla just issued a recall for over 362,000 vehicles due to a potential safety issue with their full self-driving beta software. The National Highway Traffic Safety Administration said the software has a defect that could cause the vehicle to crash without warning or fail to respond to obstacles. Now, this recall comes as Tesla faces increasing scrutiny over its self-driving technology, but Elon Musk has steadily defended Tesla's approach to autonomous driving, arguing that it will ultimately be safer than human driving. However, critics have raised concerns over Tesla's self-driving features, particularly in light of recent press about the FSD beta software, including a smear campaign that was ran during the Super Bowl. Tesla confirmed that the issue is related to the software, but said that it is not aware of any related accidents or injuries. And do you know how the recall will be fixed? You guessed it, an over-the-air, free software update. No need for owners to physically bring their car in like traditional recalls. In fact, 99% of Tesla recalls over the past year have been simple fixes that are made by pushing a software update to the vehicles. Obviously, a software update is much easier to fix rather than a physical hardware issue. And all the Tesla owners who have FSD beta software opted in at their discretion and the software is expected to continually fix bugs through updates, so this is normal, which begs the question, should a software fix like this be labeled as a recall? Most people don't think so, including Elon Musk, who said the word recall for an over-the-air software update is anachronistic and just flat wrong. What do you think? Do you agree with Elon or disagree? Now, recent leaks of Tesla's upcoming Hardware 4 self-driving computer show that it's expected to provide 10 times the processing power of the current Hardware 3 chip, which will enable more advanced features needed for Tesla's journey to achieve full self-driving capability. In addition to the new chip, Hardware 4 will also feature additional cameras plus an all-new Phoenix HD radar, which will improve the vehicle's ability to detect and recognize objects on the road. Now, the new computer is said to be capable of processing 1.8 billion pixels per second, which is a big improvement over the current Hardware 3 computer's capabilities. Tesla has been testing this hardware for a while, and it should be included on all new vehicles here sometime in the near future. And with the three additional cameras that are rumored to be located on the front bumper, which would be the very first time we've seen front bumper cameras on a Tesla, along with the new HD radar for seeing blind spots, this new Hardware 4 could very well finally bring us the highly requested bird's eye view feature. This feature would allow drivers to see a top-down view of the vehicle and its surroundings on the screen, which could be very useful for parking and navigating through tight spaces. Now, the new Hardware 4 should be a major step towards full autonomous self-driving cars, now we've seen this happen before where Tesla releases new full self-driving computers as technology advances and as Tesla realizes the need for more capable computer chips and hardware. In fact, my 2018 Model 3 came with hardware 2.5. And at the time, Tesla said that would be enough to handle full self-driving. But a couple years later, Tesla announced hardware 3, which effectively left all of us FSD owners with hardware 2.5 saying, uh, you're going to give us hardware 3 for free, right? Because you said that 2.5 was good enough. And Tesla did the right thing by retrofitting our Model 3s with the new computer. However, that is not the case with this new Hardware 4. Elon Musk said the cost and difficulty of retrofitting Hardware 3 with Hardware 4 is quite significant, so it would not be economically feasible to do so. And that was a big disappointment to all of us with Hardware 3, but Elon still expects Tesla's full self-driving to be achieved with the current Hardware 3. Either way, owners who bought FSD capabilities should absolutely be entitled to whatever hardware is physically necessary to unlock full self-driving whenever it is ready. So I do expect retrofits to happen, or it will be a big liability for Tesla if Hardware 3 isn't capable of full self-driving. Now, Speaking of self-driving technology, which relies heavily on numbers and data, today's sponsor Brilliant.org is the best way to learn science and math interactively. As someone who works in the tech industry, I know firsthand that if you're not building new skills, you can easily fall behind. The next big tech revolution is happening already, so you need to understand core concepts surrounding artificial intelligence and machine learning. And the best place to learn those is Brilliant.org, which has thousands of lessons with new lessons added monthly from fundamentals such as foundational math to more complex topics such as data science and even neural networks, just like the one Tesla's full self-driving software is built on. Now, if you enjoy Tesla's driver assistant software, then you'd enjoy the introduction to neural networks course where you can dive into the inner machinery of neural networks and discover how they actually work. 
With Brilliant's interactive courses, it's easy to stay focused and reach your learning goals faster while also having a deeper understanding and becoming a true problem solver. To try everything Brilliant has to offer free for full 30 days, visit brilliant.org slash andysly or click the link in the description. The first 200 of you will get 20% off Brilliant's annual premium subscription. Now moving on to the biggest hurdle that electric vehicles face in the US today, the charging infrastructure. Now, although Tesla has the largest fast charging network in the world with over 40,000 superchargers, the overall infrastructure is still not where it needs to be, especially for non-Tesla vehicles. Now, to solve this, the Biden administration announced new standards and major progress to build out a convenient, reliable, and user-friendly national network of 500,000 EV chargers by 2030. In support of this, the Department of Transportation announced the National Electric Vehicle Infrastructure Program, a $5 billion initiative to create a coast-to-coast -coast network of electric vehicle chargers that support long-distance trips. This means that for the first time ever, Tesla will open up a portion of its supercharger network to non-Tesla EVs, making at least 7,500 chargers available for all EVs by the end of 2024 by adding the new Magic Dock adapter to the stalls. Now, these universal chargers will include at least 3,500 new and existing superchargers along highways and level two destination charging at locations like hotels and restaurants. All EV drivers will be able to access these stations using the Tesla app or website, and Tesla will more than double its full nationwide network of superchargers. So what does this mean for Tesla owners? Well, at first it might sound like a bad thing knowing that a non-Tesla could potentially take up a valuable charging spot and be charging at a slower speed than what you could be charging at and possibly leaving you waiting for a stall, but it might not be so bad. It's great for Tesla as a company because not only will they save a ton of money by allowing the government to help fund the expansion of the supercharger network, but Tesla can charge a fee for non-Tesla vehicles to charge. And meanwhile, Tesla owners get access to double the amount of charging locations while still getting exclusivity on the existing network that won't be retrofitted to accept the non-Tesla vehicles. And if that's not enough, some even better news is that Tesla reduced the price of their CCS adapter by $75. So if you're a Tesla owner who doesn't have one of these, you may wanna pick one up because this will allow you to access even more fast charging stations. I bought one of these last year and I haven't yet had the need to use it, but who knows, a year or two from now, there may be a time when charging at a CCS station will be cheaper and or more convenient than at a supercharger depending on the pricing and demand. The problem with this adapter is that it's only compatible with more recent Teslas over the last few years. It works with my 2022 Model Y, but not on my 2018 Model 3, which requires a retrofit by Tesla. Unfortunately, they haven't started doing those retrofits just yet, so we'll have to wait and see when they start doing those. Speaking of supercharging, Tesla sent out an email recently to current Model X and Model S owners, offering them to give up their free unlimited supercharging miles in exchange for an additional $5,000 on the vehicle's trade-in value when they purchase a new Model S or X. Now, this is probably in response to the new changes to the supercharger network that we just talked about, opening it up to non-Tesla EVs. Tesla probably wants to eliminate as many vehicles with free unlimited supercharging in order to reduce supercharger use as much as possible. And to be honest, $5,000 is quite a generous offer. If I had to guess, I probably don't spend more than $200 per year on supercharging because I charge at home for the majority of my driving like most EV drivers. And that means $5,000 would be worth about 25 years of supercharging. And I know for sure that none of these owners with free and limited supercharging plan to keep their car for that long. That's why I've always said free supercharging is overrated for most EV drivers who have a place to charge at home. So do you think this is a good deal? Let me know in the comments below. And that wraps up this week's biggest Tesla news. Thank you for watching. If you enjoyed this video, give it a thumbs up and subscribe for more Tesla and tech videos in the future. My name is Andy. I'll talk to you in the next one.